Today, I'm going to show you how I got $4,000 over the trade-in value of my truck through Carmigo, a service I didn't even know existed until recently. This is also unpaid. Nobody at Carmigo knows I am making this. I'm going to give you an unbiased look at the things I loved, what bothered me, and why I think Carmigo is almost too powerful. In late 2021, I bought an 09 Toyota Tacoma and had it inspected before I purchased it by a not so great mechanic. I made sure to ask that they please look over the frame and give me their thoughts. And well, it, they didn't look that thoroughly. I ended up buying the thing thinking, you know, that's probably surface rust. And then I took it to a Toyota dealership who told me, we can't do anything other than replace the whole frame. That made me want to take it to a welder. That man that welded in a couple plates said it'll be fine. And uh, yeah, it just kept getting worse. I tried sanding it down and painting it with a rusty metal primer. However, after eight months, I was noticing other developments. Knowing the reputation of these Tacomas, it could make it another five, 10 years with no problems, or I could end up financially going down with the ship. And I also already have a project car. I've really gotten to the point where I just don't want any worries with my daily driver. So I bought it for $16,900 and Carvana quoted me 8,900. So I, now I wanna to touch briefly on what those values really mean. So you have a wholesale cost and you have a retail cost. Wholesale, and usually in this kind of price bracket, I would expect it to be around three or $4,000 below the retail value, which is what the car actually will sell for. Now, if you're thinking I overspent, I kind of did a little bit because I was looking for a manual transmission, four wheel drive Tacoma under 20 grand. And there's just not very much out there that's in decent condition because the truck really did look pretty good uh, outside of some rust being underneath. Today, the retail value on a vehicle like that is still 15 to $18,000, depending on a, a whole lot of variables there. So why is there such a huge spread between retail and wholesale in this case? Quite frankly, it's because books are not always accurate. In the case of the Tacoma, you had a five lug version, which is like, you know, your gardening or work truck spec. It has a different suspension, sits a lot lower. And then you have the six lug truck, which is lifted and usually has four wheel drive. And these things go for a lot more money. Kelly Blue Book just sees it as a base add four wheel drive. Mine also had the SR5 package, which is pretty desirable among Tacoma owners but really doesn't make a big difference when you're talking trade in values. So that's why I was being quoted so much lower than the retail value, because even Kelly Blue Book was 9,700. So now that brings me to Carmigo, which effectively gives you an invite into the dealer auction world. So you primarily have two different ways that you can get rid of a car. You can sell or trade into a dealership, or you can sell to a private party. In my case, I don't wanna sell this to anyone. I mean, it would probably drive for another five to 10 years, but if there's even the slightest chance of an issue, I don't wanna put my name on that. But I have no problems letting a dealer take a chance with it because uh, another dealer let me take a chance with it. But the problem here is again, I would probably get between 8,500 and 10,000 at the absolute most if I walked up to a dealer because all they're gonna look at is KBB or Black Book or whatever guides they have on hand. Whereas Carmigo allows dealers from every part of the United States to bid on your car. Here's the thing, I also used to, for a brief time period, buy cars at auctions for a dealership. And whenever I was looking at those vehicles coming through, they were going for way more money than I was ever seeing them go as a trade-in because I also worked in sales before that. I mean, some dealers will spend so much money because they really want that specific car. So honestly, it made inventory acquisition a very difficult job because it seemed like you're overpaying for everything. And that's how I got fortunate on Carmigo. So let's go through the selling process. Immediately after I made the account, I was hit with both texts and emails from both bots and a real person who did do a good job of helping me out because initially, you know, it just reports basically the same number that Kelly Blue Book did and then tells you, hey, you can throw it on our marketplace to get more. So after she had answered some questions, clearly told me about the $350 fee that will be implemented, we were good to go. Another advantage to Carmigo and selling to a dealer in general 
is that if you have anything remaining on your loan, have them pay it off. You, if you pay it off, you're gonna have to wait another 45, sometimes 60 days to get the actual title. So in my case, I had about $5,600 left on the Tacoma's loan. So when I sold the truck, they sent the check over to my bank. The next step is to prep your car for sale. This means maybe dehaze the headlights, clean it up, but I'd also fix some things if you can. So I went through and secured my heat shield. That way it doesn't rattle. I changed out the parking brake cables. That way I don't need to disclaim that the parking brake doesn't work. I also changed the serpentine belt. That way I don't need to tell them that my engine squeaks. These are little things, but having less disclaimers builds confidence for the buyer. And when that was done, I wrote out my descriptions. So that meant mentioning where the dings and big scratches, notable stuff was around the body, taking note of any mechanical issues, and then any tears or rips, smells, whatever, on the interior. Now, the reason why you want to disclose all that information, at least from my standpoint as a former acquisition manager, you don't want to get arbitrated. And that's the dealership equivalent of takesy backsies. So if you get a car and it is completely not what the seller said, then you need to make a claim. This could mean a cancellation of the sale, but most times it's just covering the repair costs to make the vehicle whole again. I would assume this is why Carmigo gives you so many different categories to report issues in. This is something that gave me anxiety when I found out that you can only post 13 photos and this is one of my complaints about it because I had to use their templates for photos which one is kind of wonky because it doesn't use an app it uses something that goes through my browser so the photos came off really poorly framed which drove my photographer mind crazy and then it only allowed really one photo of the actual cabin and no photos of the underside which is something that I only mentioned briefly in my descriptions because I was assuming that I'd also be able to show what was underneath. There's like a segment in the descriptors, is there rust on the body? And so to that I wrote no, because there wasn't, but there is some rust underneath. That's all I said. And that turns out is all I needed to say, but still I think maybe offering more photos would be a good idea. This does allow for a very, very quick process in posting photos and getting the car listed. But this also kind of drives me insane because whenever I actually completed the photos, it just started the listing. Like there wasn't, you know, a review your things because as I was going through and taking photos, I'm definitely hearing a squeaking noise when I turned to the left, I should mention that. But I couldn't, I couldn't change anything. The post just went live. And so I actually had to reach out to the sales rep that was designated to me to make that alteration. And I also told them that it had a squeaky clutch and I don't even think they added that one. Maybe they kind of assumed I was going down a rabbit hole and this really didn't matter as much as I was thinking. But anyway, the truck listing went live and then you have one day and I think three hours for it to run its course. And for one day and two hours, basically nothing happened. And that's as to be expected with basically every auction. But the last hour was insane. So the truck kind of slowly creeped past the $8,000 mark. And then with about 20 minutes left, I believe, it hit 10 grand. And that was like my internal goal, like, hey, just bottom of the barrel, we need to hit 10. With around five minutes ago, I passed my reserve. And then it went to like 12.5 and I was like, oh my God, this is... I remember watching these auctions as someone who was trying to buy these cars and like that 12.5 that mark in my head was where I would have been like, okay, I'm out. But it kept going. And then it went to 13.5. Within about an hour of the auction ending, I received an email with the bill of sale, signed a couple things, and then had a little bit of a technical issue getting my bank account linked. But once they had their service up and ready and my account number, we were good to go. Now they just need to come get it. So this is one of the problems with a dealer service sort of functioning directly with a consumer because the transportation is just, it really hit or miss. These are all third parties. These are people that typically just work with dealerships. They probably see a job listing online and call Carmigo to take it. And then that transportation company is supposed to make arrangements with me. I initially got called by someone saying, oh yeah, we're gonna send someone out. We're from out of Chicago. They're gonna be there about four or five hours. They'll call you when they're one hour out. Good, great. This is two days after the sale. I'm still antsy. I wanna make sure that they get the truck and that I get my money. But then just 45 minutes after the initial call, I get a call from someone else saying they also have an order for the truck and that they are coming to grab it. 
in my head, I'm thinking, okay, they left the job out for too long and now here's a, another poor tow truck driver trying to get the same job. And so I told him, someone already called me, was that you or your company? And he's like, nah. I'm like, okay, um, are you sure? Uh, yeah, I didn't call you. And then I read out the number that had called me initially to make sure that it doesn't sound familiar. And he let me know again, that wasn't him. So he canceled the job. He was the real tow truck driver. The first company, that was a, bro, a towing brokerage apparently. And this was the only time that the Carmigo support team wasn't acting super fast. And we were not able to quite fix that uh, before it was too late. So then the next day at like 10 p.m. I get a call from a tow truck driver and he's like, I'll be there at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, you may think it's kind of a weird Friday night call, but I was just editing videos, which is about the extent of my nightlife. So I was fine with it and quite happy again to just have the thing out. So Saturday morning, I start driving. He gives me a call and tells me that his truck is indeed broken down, but he'll be there just, maybe in the afternoon, maybe tomorrow. And I'm like, uh, I kind of need you to come today. Like tomorrow really isn't gonna work very well for me. And he's like, okay, like, I'll, I'll give you a call later, like just to let you know. I call him twice at like 5 p.m. This man does not return a call. I call him the next day, nothing. Monday comes around, I tell Carmigo, hey, you may want to hire someone else. And the woman that was trying to work to coordinate all of this was like, oh, I could tell through the text that she was pissed. And then she got them in line, but it still took them another day to figure everything out. And then they were still late by four hours. The tow truck driver also looks over the truck, makes sure that it is what, it's, what you say it is. Two days after that, the truck, you know, goes 400, 500 miles to wherever dealership. And then I received the money in my account, which as they said, only had a $350 fee and my bank payoff. So I was really happy and I'm going to recommend this service to anyone that is trying to sell a car, but there are some limitations for certain people. One, that transportation could be a big issue. I don't have a real job, but for a lot of people, they can't be constantly trying to change their plans to meet the needs of some random tow truck company. Of course, you could have the inverse and have a much more streamlined experience because what they're supposed to do is give you a 24 hour heads up. That way you have concise plans. It shouldn't be the way that it was for me, but this is the real world. So that is one downside to it. But again, $13,150 after the fee, I was gonna get 9,700 from KBB and that is upon a dealership looking at the truck. So if I have to jump through a couple extra hoops to get $3,500, I'll definitely do it. So that's the ultimate reason why for most people, if you are thinking about trading in or selling your truck, car, whatever, I would throw it on Carmigo. It's so much less of a hassle because I've sold vehicles through Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace before. It sucks, I don't like doing it. It's really more of a pain in the ass and then you get ripped off, especially if you have a cheaper car if you try to trade in at a dealership. A lot of times things just aren't worth it to put in the effort, so I get why you may do that, but Carmigo really is a low effort solution outside of the transportation thing. But there are limitations, so here is who this is not for. If you have a cheap car, like really cheap, older with a lower book, they probably won't be able to sell it on there. I was almost a little surprised that the old Tacoma did it. It just flat out may be incompatible. You'll know pretty quick if you enter in the car. The next reason that maybe I wouldn't use Carmigo is if you have a expensive yet not overly desirable or hot car. So say you have a two wheel drive Ford Explorer that's pretty new and you're debating trading in, that's probably going to be more worth it for you personally because you're going to get a tax credit when you trade in. So say you trade in on something that's $40,000 and your car is worth 30,000, you're only going to pay taxes on the 10 grand, which means that you save about 2,100 in taxes, making Carmigo's service a little bit less beneficial if you're planning on buying another car anyway, unless you live in a certain state like Illinois, which I believe if I remember correctly, you only get up to a $10,000 credit. But truly those are the only scenarios that I can think of as to why you wouldn't want to use this service. Seriously, try it out. I think that it is overall rough around the edges a little bit, especially with 
uh, how you actually post the vehicle that could be done a little bit better. I think some way to either better communicate with drivers or only use certain ones, maybe that would help it. It could honestly just be an inherent flaw of using a service like this. But really overall, I think this is an incredibly powerful tool and almost too powerful because you are forcing dealerships now to buy cars for more money. But when you think about it, they've already been buying cars for this money. Like at auctions, dealer auctions, they do regularly spend a ton of money on cars. Trade-in values, you just kind of get stiff-armed a lot of the time. And if you think this means I should have been able to walk up to a dealer and get 13 grand for my Tacoma, Remember, not every dealer wants a 2009 Tacoma. On top of the auction setting usually grabbing more money, Carmigo helps you find the dealers that want your vehicle and are willing to pay over book for it. So I think I'll leave it at that. Comment below if you've sold your car on Carmigo. Tell us your thoughts on it. I wanna know because this is just my experience with it. Thanks for watching. This is not my usual content. I typically stay around the car review world though. So if you wanna subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, I'll have a lot of high quality stuff coming your way. Oh, and of course, thank you to my very loyal patrons.